later in life, he would do anything for anybody. And everybody knew that. So I don't know if somebody took advantage of that, of him and his good nature or what. He's just helpful. He loved kids. He, he was supposed to be the godfather of my two daughters. Um, yeah, he's just a fun-loving guy. It is absolutely out of the ordinary for him not to check in with my, our mom when he didn't come home. That house was a party house. I mean, people there are partying every night, the same crowd with Kevin's friends. As soon as Kevin disappeared, nobody, and I mean nobody from day one when he disappeared, would go back over there. Missing posters for Kevin Mahoney have been scattered throughout the North Dakota and Minnesota region for decades. They're marked by three images of a young man in his 30s with long brown hair. In one photo, he's wearing a button-up shirt tucked in with a black vest over the top. It looks like he's at a celebration with balloons scattered in the background and a plate and drink in hand. He looks happy. The photos on that poster are accompanied by the words of his family. Please help us. Since 1993, Kevin's family has searched for answers related to his disappearance. He was last seen in October of 1993 at a house party in North Fargo. A going away party for a friend. His friend Troy. Those who were at the party told investigators Kevin left on foot, alone that night, for a long walk to his brother's home in Moorhead, Minnesota, a neighboring city on the Minnesota side of the North Dakota-Minnesota border. It's roughly a one and a half mile walk. He hasn't been seen since. Kevin's sisters, Kim Brislin and Michelle Elson Peter, have been relentless advocates for their brother's case. They've constantly been in touch with Fargo investigators, and they've also taken matters into their own hands. It doesn't matter where these two women are in the country. They always carry a stash of their brother's missing person posters. They put them up in gas stations, restaurants, rest stops, anywhere they can, anywhere that allows it. And for decades, since Kevin went missing, the sisters have been putting up missing posters in the Fargo-Moorhead area. Because somehow, the posters they put up are mysteriously removed. Quite frequently, actually. This year marks 30 years since Kevin went missing. And his sisters believe that somebody in the Fargo area knows something. They're after one thing. They want the person, or people, who know what happened to come forward before their memories fade, before those memories are carried to the grave. This is The Vault. I'm Trisha Terinskis. This is part one of a two-part series titled The Night Kevin Mahoney Vanished. The going away party Kevin attended was hosted by a friend at a known party house in North Fargo. He went there a lot. He'd even taken his sisters there before. Here's Kim. On one occasion, Kevin actually took me over there. And there were some shady people there. And I told him straight up, I said, hey, you know, don't leave me alone anywhere in here because I don't know these people. And we just popped in there and I don't know. He partied a little bit, and we left. By all accounts, the gathering the night he went missing was large, with plenty of people streaming in and out. There are conflicting stories about Kevin's movements that night, which we'll get to in this series, but the official statement given to law enforcement is that he left that night on foot. Here's Michelle. Kevin's best friend Troy was moving to St. Cloud, So they were having a party over at a guy named Ben's house. 
in North Fargo. And apparently throughout the night, some people have said that late that night he was planning on leaving Ben's house and walking to his brother's in South Moorhead. My brother in South Moorhead wasn't home that weekend, so we don't know if he showed up. In this series, we'll stick to those two first names, Troy and Ben. In the days following Kevin's disappearance, law enforcement involvement was limited. Kevin was an adult, and it was considered a possibility at that time that he had voluntarily left the area. It was also the 90s. That seemed to happen quite a bit. But Kevin's family members knew he didn't just leave. It wasn't like him to get up and go, especially without talking to his mother. According to his sisters, he was a mama's boy. The last time our mother saw Kevin was when Ben and Kevin came over to the house and Kevin wanted help uh, doing wallpaper at that time at Ben's because they were remodeling. And our mother couldn't do it at the time because she was canning tomatoes. And that was the last time she saw Kevin. That was two days after he went missing. That Friday, she, I came into town because I lived out of town. And she asked me to stop by Ben's and check and see what Kevin was up to. And that's when I went over there and they said he was gone. And that's when it all started. When she showed up, she saw three regulars of the party house, friends of Kevin's. How how did they act? Just straightforward. I don't know where he is. I don't know where he is. He left. Eventually, the stories partygoers told detectives and the case didn't seem to add up. It's just very conflicting the first uh, evening on who actually saw him last and what, what the real story was. Kevin's close friends claimed he left the party that night. Other people said they never saw him leave the party at all. Yet, the party was large, and Michelle wasn't able to track down everyone who was there that night. Considering law enforcement wasn't involved at that point, no official interviews or investigations were conducted at that time. They all took place much later. Kevin's sisters haven't stopped searching for answers. They are, in a sense, detectives on their own case. The official investigation is in the hands of the Fargo Police Department, who along the way have followed leads that Kevin could have been buried in the basement of the home that hosted the going away party. On part two of this series. There was a space in the basement. um, It had a wall or it didn't have a wall. It was opened up. And then there had been apparently We had heard a story that he was buried in the basement behind that wall. So we've had the detectives over there. Now there is partial of a wall, but it's it's different than it was then. And they also found um, a space of fresh, newly concrete on the basement floor. For photos and images related to this case, visit inforum.com slash the vault. If you want to support our work, subscribe at subscribe.inforum.com. For just 99 cents a month, you'll gain subscriber-only access to our treasure trove of case documents, images, and exclusive content on all the cases we cover. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, let us know what stories you'd like to see covered in the comments. This episode was written, narrated, and produced by me, Trisha Terinskis. The Vault's editor is Jeremy Fugelberg. Thank you for listening.